And welcome back to Flexible Games, where we are playing Fortress Craft Evolved Horrors and Factory. Well, Crystal Dynamics just got done. Let's go look to see what we can see here. Um, I, let's uh, unlock the Slime Attractor while we're here. Uh, Spiderbot Blaster, we definitely want that. And uh, let's see, Crystal Coal Infused Crystal Clock Maker. Yeah, so let's uh, see. We got all the requirements here. I actually want to make four of these, and we're gonna need a few hoppers. And speaking of material, I'm gonna try to accomplish a few things in this episode. Uh, one of these, I want a. Well, yeah, its power is a problem, but I think if I take that away, if I put it here, I should be able to beam power from here over. This requires 15 power per second, but we're not going to give it that much. So here here and here we're gonna have remove remove and add so this thing needs low-grade steel which we actually can give it uh, how much we only have 14 right now uh, I think I set up a few more to be crafted over here let's see how many we've got we've got 20 more but it also needs four clocks per item so we want these crystal clocks uh, these uh, crystal clock makers to go over here and let's see how do we want to set up the power and everything else it's a little tricky um, how much power do these need one power so these these need an absolute bare minimum amount of power and I think we'd be able to really give it what it needs with a couple solar panels. Even though they only work during the day, I think we'd be able to uh, give it what it needs. So I built four of these. I'm gonna have two on each side. And let's see how many uh, conveyors do I have? Do I have enough of those? I do. Storage hoppers, I think I have enough of. Uh, batteries so I'm gonna want four of these but then I'm gonna want two of these so I need four five six seven eight that'll give me these two and then I need four more so if we go to F4 here so the two power big powers on the outsides these will, um, since these have more power than these, it's they transfer a little bit more effectively, and that's what we're going for here. So let's uh, get those power while the sun is up, which is just about to go down. I want to make sure those have a little bit of power for the start of it here. And to kick it off let's go in like that I want to go in like that and a turntable smack in the middle with a hopper this is gonna feed crystal into all of these and these in turn will feed into this hopper just like that so there's our crystal this has to be the steel bar and then outputs to our great uh, add only hopper so the last thing we need is to put crystal in here and it should work it should pull crystal out and be able to put it into all of the sides just like that these will pull out and put the crystal in 
So this won't get all the power that it needs. I'm essentially pulling out of, directly out of this. I could, if I had the nickel, I do have some nickel. Um, I could speed it up a little bit. Um, let's build another power storage block just for fun. Put that there and a little bit more powerful of a laser into there will really help keep that going strong. And we have four already. So let's see. We should now be able to see everything here. So we need five of these uh, PCBs. I'm going to make 20 because I'm going to a few of these. Uh, I'm eventually going to want a few of these excavators. And I need two lasers, two blue lasers. These are a little bit pricey, especially in this at this point in the game. Uh, ten servo motors, which is just copper. So there we go for those. I've already got everything but the conductive PCBs. So let's see how many of these. We've got two. I'm quickly coming to the point in the game where I'm going to need setups. Um, I've already got a good uh, stamper going. Uh, I've actually got a stamper underneath this one, so this is a four. The stamps four at a time, um, and I've got one wire. I usually have a setup where I have four of these, one of these, four PCB assemblers, and then one that just makes coils. Because believe it or not, coils are actually used in a few recipes nowadays. Uh, so let's see how many more we have. We have enough now to make the Supreme Excavator. And we are going to put this to use right away. If I, so I can find it, there it is. I want to put an icon on that. Um, but we are going to use this laser right here. Uh, to try to uh, sort out a little bit of our terrain to get ready for more progression. So I want to beam this this way and get it ready to go. Um, I can start it off right away. Um, let's just put it, I want one more blue battery and my lithium that's over that we've been mining this whole game is out it's completely gone if you look over here you can see that this smelter there's nothing left there's only two in there it's been like that now for quite some time and it's unfortunate so we are gonna beam this over here and the trick with this is uh, if you wanted to build, if you wanted to dig out um, at floor level, you want to put it one level under where you're going. Okay, so that's one level under, then it will clear out the exact floor. Let's keep the default settings, 4 to 64. <clears throat> I don't quite need it 64 high, so you can lower it. <clears throat> the speed at which this, you hold the button down. Uh, it is based off of your frame rate, believe it or not. Um, but yeah, that just kind of shortens it up a little bit. It gives us a more accurate des description of um, how uh, how far into its job it is. <clears throat> and the radius is good at four. It can go up to sixty-four. So, and the height can go up to five twelve. So it can dig out a massive area, but it takes a very long time to dig out an area that big. So it's kind of a trade-off. If you want to go to an area and just let it dig for hours and hours, you can do that. And it will just sit and dig it and dig it and dig it. Um, but if you want to clear an area quick, um, don't use too, too big of variables when it comes to that. So... Oh, I forgot to set, don't drop anything, hit Q uh, to toggle the ore mode. I don't want to clear ore, I want to do this. Clearing ore takes four times the power. So if you want an area 
uh, if you're a little short on power and you want to clear an area of both blocks and ore, I recommend clearing it first with with uh, default uh, ore so it doesn't clear it. And then once it's done its job, change that setting and hit and, and um, hit the numpad plus or minus or the home and end to change the uh, radius and it will reset itself and go ahead and work. So there's our first bit of terrain that we've cleared out uh, with the auto excavator. And to just continue this, since this is a default radius four, just dig five in. So there's two, three, four, five, and dig down one. And just replace the system just like this and it's really good to go and uh, you can change the default settings in the config file in the XML uh, so if you're digging out an area and you want to have it default to different values so you don't have to change them as often you can go ahead and do that in the XML and the new ones you place in the world will use those new default values uh, because you can always change them in game but they don't doesn't change the default values it starts with. So now we're just going through and clearing terrain for future uh, future growth and expansion. Uh, because my hive is over there, I really want to leave this area for the hive farm, and those tend to get pretty big. So I want to leave a good area for that. So I'm thinking. Uh, my uh, main mining operation is going to be in this area. So I got lithium over there. I've got huge amounts of iron and stuff under here. And I have absolutely no clue of where that nickel is in relation to everything. Uh, I haven't really got my bearings down there at all yet. Uh, so I think this is dropping. So I don't want it to drop. But if it breaks garbage, it has a 5% chance of dropping. And you can overload that with uh, the T key. So I did it again. I used the wrong key. So hit T, and it won't drop any blocks whatsoever. And uh, it won't. It'll use the default amount of power instead of the OR multiplier. So keep that in mind. And it just kind of works. You know, it's a good. It's a good system. It's balanced in its power use. And now we have more machine blocks 80 crystal clocks we don't have any more steel and that's what we are low on right now is steel and we've got some more nickel uh, this is really in heavy demand right now so I want 30 more uh, steel blocks uh, we're gonna want a lot more than that uh, and as far as iron goes, I'm going to want a whole lot of iron. So we're going to need to get some cargo lifts working. Now that we have an excavator, I can actually go down to the levels where the nickel and stuff is and dig up from there uh, and see where it comes out up here in the world. Um, and I can do that, you know, getting a good idea of it so my titanium uh, if I were to guess um, let's see there that one that one this goes down if this is where my lights are my titanium I think is over in this direction uh, yeah I, I couldn't even guess my I get so lost when I go underground I have no idea what my bearings are, so I'm going to have to find a way to, you know, dig, dig straight up, see where it comes out at, and plan a big smelting operation and cargo lift around the tier two ores, because those are the first ones that I want to bring up. I've got a lot of lithium uh, saved up uh, that we can use until we get enough material to build a cargo lift for lithium. So with crystal clocks sort of maxed out, I kind of want to keep those going 
So I might need some for filters or conveyor belts or something. So there's the rest of my conductive PCBs. I kind of want to keep these on me. Let's put those right under the gold. I have some more ore that I can smelt. Kind of falling behind on this. I usually have this so automated that I don't even need to worry about it. And uh, so having to manually do it for a while is a little cumbersome. I also want to automate uh, and individualize the smelters for both tin and copper so I can uh, start storing more of that in reserves so I can just come by and grab a bunch of it because I'm I'm still you know I got a lot of copper but I've got a lot of research that's going to use that copper and my tin right now is the lowest so let's uh, enable tin again copper can't quite keep up once it's uh, once it's fully empty it can't quite keep up with the smelter so we're going to enable both of those and hope that we get a good amount of tin out of it the research has gone really well so far and the next thing we're going to want is a spider bot defense but i want that somewhere over here uh but down at the level that we were at so I'm going to cut the uh, cut this off right up here, and this will be the drop, same way that I have the drop over here. So the whole base will actually be down to that level, and this will be just a raised platform that has the CPH and maybe a handful of defenses, uh, and everything else will be below here. So this, this thing sounds like it's done. Let's uh, change this up. Go one, two, three, four, five, dig it down. That tells me where we're going next. And let's place the block. Hit T and uh, there it is. And it'll eventually all be this uh, reinforced floor. This actually makes you walk faster now. So I don't know if you can, it's a subtle change, but you do start walking faster on it, which is awesome. Um, so right now, this is actually not doing anything because I'm not giving any power. So this is sort of starred for power right now because I'm processing, which is fine. I'm not in a huge need of advanced machine blocks quite yet. And now we have crystal clocks all made ready to go. Looks like my enriched coal backed all the way up, ready for the next development cycle. Let's figure out what we're going to research next. Um, I'm thinking advanced crystal dynamics. I'm not sure what this actually unlocks oh lens that's interesting overclocker yeah we're not going to use the overclocker we're going to need this advanced power grid next uh, just because this unlocks the turbine and so we have one more research after this one that we're going to need to do in order to get turbines um, and that is the uh, hydro, no, the hydrocarbon recombination. Uh, so I forgot to look at the requirements for this. 50 simplified, 50 basic. Like I said, uh, yes, we have a lot of materials, but they go really fast when you start researching. So we have another 400 of t tin that we've got to use, which will really just suck it dry it'll just all of our material goes into research but that'll have to do it for this episode so i thank you for watching and i will see you next time